Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Parisian potatoes. That's right. Welcome to another episode of Recipes Nobody Makes Anymore, which might not be literally true, but these are definitely the opposite of trendy. And if you're looking for the perfect potato recipe for a large group, do not make these. But if you're cooking for somebody special on date night, these gorgeous crispy potato balls would be an excellent choice. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with something I usually don't like to start with, and that would be a specific specialized kitchen utensil, which in this case is a melon baller, or as we call it in the business and in culinary school, a Parisian scoop, which is how these potatoes got their name. And if you want to make them, you're going to need one of these. And they usually come with two different size scoops. And for this procedure, we're going to use the smaller one. And besides our Parisian scoop, we will also need a couple peeled russet potatoes, And what we'll do is try to scoop out as many balls per potato as we can, which is not going to be a lot because we can't scoop these too close together, right? That first one was perfect, but the second one, because I went too close to the first scoop, as you can see, is not perfectly round and ball-like because I cut into the cavity made by the first scoop. And did I do that because it had been so long since I made these? Or did I do it just to make that point? Well, there's no way to really know. But the point is, if you want perfectly shaped balls, make sure you don't make these scoops too close together. Oh, and just a little pro tip in case you don't have one of these tools. If you have a second hand store in your town, go check out the kitchen section, where I almost guarantee you can pick one of these up for pocket change. So check there first before you buy a new one. And out of a potato this size, we are only going to get like eight or nine balls, which is fine. We will call that enough for one portion. And of course, we will scoop those into some nice cold fresh water so they don't discolor. And obviously, don't discard what we call the potato carcass. Okay, those you'll want to save and grate up and make some potato pancakes. Or maybe some mashed potatoes. But in any event, don't throw those away. You can use those. And then what we'll do once our potatoes have been balled is add those to four cups of fresh cold water, along with two tablespoons of kosher salt or one tablespoon of fine salt. And by generously salting the water, Our potatoes are basically going to be seasoned already, and we won't really have to worry about salting these at the end. And we'll give that a stir and bring it up to a boil on medium-high heat. And we are definitely not going to cook these all the way through. All right, what the plan is here is we're going to wait for this to come up to a boil, at which point we're going to cook these for just two minutes before we remove those from the water and let them cool. But we won't start timing this until our water is actually boiling. All right, that is close, but not quite boiling. So we'll give that a little more time until it looks more like this, at which point we can set our timer for two minutes and we'll grab our strainer and a plate covered with a couple paper towels. And like I said, we'll let those potatoes boil for two minutes, at which point we can turn off the heat and we'll use our strainer or spider as it's called to transfer our potatoes onto the plate. And that's it. We'll simply make sure those are spaced out and not on top of each other since we need these to cool all the way down to room temp. And the perfect doneness for these is exactly halfway between raw and fully cooked and tender. Okay, so when we poke a knife in, it still feels firm, but it's not raw and hard, but it's also not soft where that knife goes right in with no effort. And by the way, absolute precision is not critical. Okay, pretty much anywhere close in the middle between raw and fully cooked is gonna work for these. And like I said, we will let these cool all the way down And yes, you can definitely make these ahead and then refrigerate them until you're ready to brown them up in a pan. But you know what, I'm ready. So once my potatoes were cooled, I went ahead and transferred a couple tablespoons of clarified butter into a pan, which we will set over medium heat. And what we'll do is let that butter heat up for a couple minutes and then we'll carefully transfer our potatoes in, which again are completely dry and fully cooled. And then to finish these, all we have to do is let these cook on medium in that butter until the outsides are golden brown and crispy, and the insides are fully cooked and fluffy. And whether you use a spoon or a spatula or a spoonula, or you simply toss these by moving the pan around, we do want to kind of keep these moving so they brown evenly, and we don't have one side of the potato ball that's white and the other side that's dark brown. Okay, so we don't have to do this constantly, but over the course of the next seven to 10 minutes or so, we do want to stir these slash toss these slash keep these moving fairly often. And as we get towards the end of the process, and we can feel and hear these getting crispy, we can go ahead and start turning specific balls individually, as need be. And believe it or not, that's it. 
Once the outside's crispy and golden brown, and the inside's soft and fluffy, which yes, you're allowed to test for, just don't eat too many before you serve them. All right, we only made a few, but once those have cooked long enough, we'll go ahead and pull those off the heat and serve them up. Ideally next to a nice bistro steak, but unfortunately I got no beef. So I'm gonna serve and eat mine out of this adorable little baking dish. And once I transfer those in, I sprinkle down a little bit of salt, which I just did by muscle memory, and you really don't need to, since we cooked them in that generously salted water. And I also finished up with some chives, which would taste nice, but they just bounced all over, mostly on the table, which was not ideal. So if you wanna do an herb that actually sticks on the top and you can see it, I would go with some parsley or some tarragon. But anyway, I went ahead and cleaned up the table and reapplied a few chives here and there. And then I grabbed a fork and dug in to what is basically a round, butter-flavored french fry. And as far as variations go, you could, if you want, cook these in bacon fat or toss them with different kind of spice blends. So above and beyond the basic technique, feel free to flavor these any way you want. I mean, you are, after all, the Chef John Stan of your palm Parisienne. Oh, and just a little behind the scenes info, we were actually having new windows put in at the exact moment I was filming this. So there was a lot of noise and I couldn't do the fork don't lie fork scrape, but then they stopped for a few seconds. So I'm able to let you hear a little bit of how crispy these were. But anyway, that's it. My take on the lost art of Parisian potatoes. I remember when we were shown how to do these in culinary school, the chef joked and said, pay close attention since this is probably the last time in your career you will ever see these. And you know what? That was close to being literally true. Although I do remember prepping for a banquet at the Carnelian Room in San Francisco, where believe it or not, two other cooks and I prepped an entire five gallon bucket of these things. Yes, an actual full size five gallon bucket to the top with Parisian potatoes. And yes, we all got blisters, but it was totally worth it. Or so I assume. As prep cooks, we actually didn't get to talk to the customers. But anyway, whether you make these to revive an old culinary school classic, or like I said, you want to impress a certain someone, or you just want to enjoy French fries butter flavored and ball shaped, no matter your motivation, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.